Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Happy Monday. Lots to get to on this edition of the podcast. The new and first time 2025 on 300 rankings were released on Monday. So we've got some SMU worthy prospects to go over on that list as well. We'll do that. But Friday night, SMU hosted a Friday night spring scrimmage. On campus were plenty of high-profile targets for the Mustangs. We're going to run those down and also also share some thoughts on the scrimmage. The media wasn't allowed in, but we were uh, able to, of course, work some back channels and see how it went and get some takeaways for you guys who want to share those as well. Let's dive in, though, to really the main point of this pod. And I think looking at what SMU has done so far in the 2024 class, as far as targets go, I wanted to kind of highlight why I think this is a class that is starting to get on the rise and build some momentum because SMU, they're sitting with two commitments, Tyler Aronson, the quarterback out of the Sunshine State, who just spent the past week in Dallas on SMU's campus to do some recruiting, meet with the coaches, watch practice, do all those things, as well as Jamarie Cauley, wild man out of South Oak Cliff, Those are two high-profile prospects um, that have SMU sitting pretty so far in the class of 2024, but a lot of their targets have been quietly and consistently making their way to campus, and I want to kind of highlight some of the ones that I feel like SMU is starting to trend in the right direction for, and I want to lead off uh, with somebody who was on campus Friday night. Chris Wacoma, the four-star defensive back from Arlington Bowie, uh, he was on campus for yet another visit, I believe, and this is just publicly, that this marks five visits to SMU's campus for the four-star safety. Uh, He's one of the top overall prospects in the state of Texas. Uh, SMU does uh, lead the on-three recruiting prediction machine for him. SMU uh, has hosted him multiple times, including that kind of famous Uh, November unofficial visit day where the staff had multiple prospects on campus getting a chance to, you know, really push the stay at home mentality. Wild man was a part of that group. Wacoma was there Um, on three rates rates him as the number 276 overall prospect in the country, the number 27 safety nationally Baylor, Texas tech, UTSA, uh, Arizona state, uh, Louisiana tech, A bunch of other programs also in the mix here for him. He hasn't said any official visits just yet, but he was on campus Friday night. We caught up with him for his full reaction. You could check that out at ontheponyexpress.com. But I think you got to start giving Scott Simons a little bit of credit here. You know, he's taking over this recruitment once he made the move to, you know, the safeties coach full time um, alongside Kyle Cooper back there. But Scott Simons leading the way on recruiting Chris Wacoma. He's done a really nice job, and that's something that, you know, Chris has really kind of communicated to me now multiple times. We saw him at the Under Armour Dallas camp um, where he, you know, performed and did a really nice job in front of all of us. But he reiterated at that camp that Scott Simons has done a nice job. We were texting uh, just this morning about his SMU visit on Friday, and that was, again, something that stuck out, just kind of how real and personable he is as far as, you know, communicating with his players um, and doing all of that. So Chris Wacom. Wacoma is one that I feel like SMU is really starting to trend for. When it comes to, you know, this 2024 class at the defensive back position, we've talked a lot about how, uh, you know, they could really be in for a really impressive haul. Um, Landon Cleveland was one that was on campus earlier this spring. He's out of Mansfield legacy. Uh, He's not a four-star prospect, but he's got plenty of programs after him. Um, being that, you know, Oklahoma State leads the on three recruiting prediction machine. Um, the six, 185 pound defensive back is somebody that I could see SMU recruiting is kind of like a will linebacker safety spot. Um, he's really talented. He was on campus earlier this spring. Baylor's in the mix. TCU, Texas has an offer out to him. This secondary is probably the most intriguing part of the 2024 class because when you look at what they could, could bring in <clears throat> we haven't even gotten to ashton williams uh the trophy club byron nelson uh defensive back who i got a chance to work out this past or to watch work out this past weekend i should say uh with flight skills 
a trainer out of uh, the Dallas area who specializes in a lot of the top defensive backs. And lo and behold, I show up on Sunday morning up at the pit in Frisco, and there's Ashton Williams right there working out in an SMU sweatshirt, and then he ditched that and had an SMU T-shirt on underneath. Uh, he's getting close to setting some official visits. Um, SMU is heavily involved with him and has been for a long time. Uh, he's got family ties to the program. And he told me right now the plan is for him to trip to SMU um, just you know down the tollway uh, with his teammate, David Cabongo, a four-star safety in the class of 2024. Um, on three ranks, uh, Cabongo, um, uh, or we don't, I thought he was four-star, but um, we haven't gotten a rating on him just yet, but he is one of the top defensive backs in the area. Both of them are key targets for SMU. I'm intrigued to see where Ashton Williams ends up positionally. Uh, he has that big frame that you like to see. Uh, no question about it. You see him running around out here just doing some drills, some light work on a Sunday, um, but he's got the size to play in the box, and he's also got that defensive back training to, of course, you know, work out in the secondary and 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 play there and kind of pursue that um, as his long term position. I think those two guys would be really nice pickups to solidify that safety room long term for SMU, and then you can kind of shoot for the stars here. And this is where I think we've seen SMU really do a nice job. They are going to have Kadavian Dotson Walker on campus later this month. Well, they're going to have him on campus uh, in April, I should say. They've had uh, Levante Johnson out of Houston CE King on campus. He's a versatile defensive back, just on the verge of four-star status, starting to pick up some recruiting momentum. He's got that length to play the corner spot. He's got that size to play the safety spot. Um, Ricky Hunley's recruiting him, so I got to imagine SMU's pushing that he can be a corner for them at the next level. All these guys we're talking about have multiple uh, Power 5 offers under their names. A lot of them highly touted in that sense. And then you move up to, to Zach Smith at the linebacker position. I think SMU is really starting to trend for him. Shea Smith out of Franklin, Texas, who's you know a linebacker prospect. Both of those guys were on campus for visits recently, which is what you want to see. Zach Smith has a lot of visits to take. Baylor, Arizona State, among others. Same goes for Shea Smith. He's starting to pick up some serious recruiting attention as well. He plays quarterback for Franklin, um, and he's got a lot of in-state offers already under his belt. I just feel like this defensive class has the chance that if you see a Pac-12 invite, you could really see it turn up even more. But we haven't even gotten to Speedy Nettles, the Dallas Christian defensive back, another guy right on the verge of four-star status, who was on campus for Friday night's practice. And Purdue is going to host him for an official visit. He's probably going to take an SMU official visit in all likelihood. SMU has been recruiting him for a very long time. Ricky Hunley has been on him for a long time, dating back to his days at Liberty. This secondary and this defensive class has a chance to be a good one. I like what SMU is doing. I like their approach. Um, they've been very particular as far as who they're offering and who they're going after. Um, and they had and they had Alex January, you know, shooting for the stars here. But they had Alex January, a four star defensive tackle out of Duncanville, also on campus Friday night. Um, Jaden Langley out of Fort Worth Boswell is a guy that is really high on SMU right now. He visited earlier this spring. He's got Texas Tech, North Texas, other offers under his belt already. But he's very high on what SMU um, is selling to him. Very, very impressed with the program overall. So, um, and then to kind of wrap it up on the defensive side of the ball, they had Zaylen Scott on campus on Friday night, who's a top target. But then Zena Umazolo, out of Allen, four star defensive end, uh, is a guy you've got to start talking about SMU with. I was talking with a couple different sources um, away from SMU about him and the Mustangs. Might be a dark horse in this one. They've now had him on campus two weekends, or excuse me, for two practices this spring already. Texas, where his brother plays, is certainly the favorite right now. Oklahoma, AM is pursuing him as well. But he's a top 150 overall prospect in the class of 2024, a top 15 edge prospect as well. You can get him. He's your pass rusher of the future. He's an elite prospect. You're going to have to battle Texas, and there's a lot going for Texas. I'm not saying that SMU is the leader here, 
But SMU is a program that you have to start paying attention to for Zena Umazolu um, because they've had him on campus. He was really high on it, communicated that to a couple sources uh, of mine as well. So um, I've had a lot of people, uh, or a couple people, I should say, text me and say, hey, I think you, you really start need to pay it start needing to pay attention um, to SMU and Zena because his interest is real. They're doing a good job recruiting him. So I'm very impressed with, with where SMU's at on that side of the ball. I think the staff is doing a terrific job there. Um, you build off of that on the offensive line. And, and I, I think this is a group that historically we're seeing SMU now address in the portal and, and they loaded up um, without a doubt with multiple guys uh, this past cycle couple one-year guys in Ja'Kai Clark and, and Hyron White, but P.J. Williams, Logan Parr, um, guys like that who come into the fold. And then you get into signing a high school class that they did, kind of developmental players. Uh, and I'm not saying that they're not going to pan out, but a Sean Scott who's going to have to pack on 40 pounds to, to play offensive line. Reagan Gill, you want to keep developing his body. Um, Alex Woods is, is somewhat raw. It's a, it's a different offense that they run. But this – offensive line group that they're starting to recruit and kind of starting to hone in on, at least from my vantage point, they offered Graham Utter. They were first to offer him uh, earlier this spring when he came through on a visit. Then he goes out at Under Armour Dallas and he posts some of the best testing numbers that you can ask for as an offensive lineman, things that translate to the next level. He's got that two-way uh, ability on the offensive and defensive line, which is another good indicator. I think this staff is is starting to kind of pick its battles on the offensive line well. I think they're going to be um, a, a staff that wants to go out and find some developmental type prospects. I'm intrigued to kind of see how this group pans out as as official visits start to uh, roll forward. Um, and big news uh, on the tight end front as we transition into that. Uh, the first tight end offer did go out. Um, from SMU staff last week as uh, Ju Julian, Julian Thomas Roberts, the uh, Richardson Pierce tight end, was on campus. He's got family ties to SMU. His mom went to SMU. Um, and he is a prospect now that you've got to circle SMU for. He was out there watching practice. Tyler Aronson was doing some recruiting. He's got a Power 5 offer in Texas Tech. Uh, Utah State and UNLV are in there. He's going to start picking up some serious attention, I think, as his – uh, year unfolds. And then, you know, just kind of working our way back here. Um, Keandi Henry, uh, who's out of Lake Dallas, he's set to be on campus on Friday. So a big name uh, coming to campus uh, for the SMU staff. Uh, he's a four-star prospect ranking inside the top 200, uh, 6'3", 185. Texas Tech does lead the on three recruiting prediction machine there, but I'm interested to see what happens. He was a one-time Texas Tech commit, so that will change. Uh, we'll see that kind of um, make a move, um, I would say, in the coming um, weeks and months, you know, as visits unfold and things like that. Um, but um, they do have their, you know, kind of claws out in different uh, wide receivers trying to make a move for some high profile prospects. They know that they can always go to the portal as well. Uh, and I don't think they need, necessarily need to take many wide receivers either um, this cycle. So the running back position. Uh, you look at what they could do with a uh, Harry Stewart out, out of Frisco Centennial. He's a guy that's been to SMU a bunch. I know they'd love to land him and Decatur, Texas running back Nate Palmer. Um, he's got a lot of power five offers to his name. Uh, he's the number 205th overall prospect in the country and number 15 running back nationally, according to On3. Um, USC does lead the On3 recruiting prediction machine. Um, he's set to check out USC twice coming up. He's going to take an official visit um, from what we see. But look, this is a guy that SMU has pushed for for a long time. And I think uh, they're going to get potentially an official visit out of him. If they do, that'll give them a chance to kind of go head to head with some of these big programs and see what they can um, come up with as it uh, you know gets into crunch time with some of these prospects starting to set official visits. I think this is a group that really is starting to have some momentum. I want to see who does, in fact, set official visits. Sometimes you can hear a lot of things. They can say a lot of things, but you got to see them set an official um, and get to campus for those to really see that interest level that you want to see. 
be validated. So um, Friday night, great start for SMU as they are starting to do these uh, Friday night spring scrimmages for recruits in a big way. They're going to have one this week. Be sure to subscribe to OnThePonyExpress.com. It's just $10 a month, a couple beers, a couple coffees at uh, Starbucks uh, for you to be in the know on SMU recruiting and the team. Speaking of the team, they did have a scrimmage on Friday night. Uh, talking with a couple sources, uh, the things that really stood out, um, one, um, Preston Stone uh, does have a group uh, on offense that is probably going to cook in a big way, um, I would say, just having watched them in spring. But we haven't necessarily been able to see a ton from them when it comes to um, – the scrimmaging, they are, you know, in a point in spring ball where they're trying to be careful. They're practicing hard. They do go, you know, best on best. We saw that uh, and shared that in our spring practice notebook on Thursday. And you guys saw, of course, you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, you know, video that we shared it on, on our YouTube channel and, and shared, um, you know, just throughout, you know, if you watch the podcast uh, on uh, our YouTube page as well, you know, you could see they do go best on best. They have that ability to really challenge each other. Um, but this is a a group that when they get to scrimmage, they're at the point now in their development that, you know, this is what you want to see. You want to see them go best on best and really battle it out. And Preston Stone and his group offensively is really impressive. And I, and I think that's um, what is standing out to most people when it comes down to it, they're seeing Jalen Knighton run with physicality that you want to see. Uh, you're seeing um, players like Jordan Curley um, and Romello Brinson and, and Keyshawn Smith and Moochie Dixon really shine uh, from an athleticism and a playmaker, uh, you know, ability. And that's not even talking about um, LJ Johnson, who is really flash as of late. Uh, you have guys uh, like, um, you know, RJ Maryland returning, who's going to be a star uh, this season. I, I think not enough people are talking about just how good he's going to be. Um, I think the physicality that this team plays with, both on the offensive and defensive lines, has improved in such a big way. And that's what most people who go to practice and watch from the outside and, and get that opportunity like we do as media, they come away saying, wow. They have really turned this roster around um, in terms of the physicality that these guys are bringing to the table. And I think that's what you want to hear. Um, the vertical threats that SMU has offensively are terrific, and, and they are going to get their chance to shine this year, no question about it. Defensively, though, you know, the secondary is getting a lot of buzz. I think the edge that those players play with um, you look at your uh, Jonathan McGills, you look at your Jalen Davis Robinson and um, CJ Sanders and, and just these guys that play with such an edge out there and aren't aren't afraid to hit. And then there's household names like a Brandon Crosley and Ahmad Moses um, and to an extent, Brian Massey that, you know, do know how to really lay the wood and 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 have that mentality. Um, you factor that in with the defensive line completely changing, and and this group has a chance to really be um, special, I think. And that's the thing that I think you have to kind of see it to understand it is just how much improved they are on the defensive line from a size perspective. Um, what they're going against every day with this offensive line, you have Marcus Bryant, Hyron White, and Thalen Robinson who are really the big guys up front that really have a lot of size to them. Um, but then you go with Jordan Miller and Elijah Chapman and Elijah Roberts um, and Devere Levelston and Mike Johan Sanjo and Cheeky and Braden Flowers is flashed. And, you know, you're just seeing a group that has size and athleticism and a want to. And I think they're getting more out of them this spring. So um, I, I, you know, the it's spring. There's optimism uh, in droves, uh, without a doubt, and especially after the transfer class and everything that SMU brought in. And that is warranted um, by what we're seeing pretty much day in, day out. We're seeing a lot uh, from this SMU group um, as far as what they're going to bring to the table. Uh, and and I think that's it's telling when people who don't get to see the team on a day-to-day -day basis come away saying, you know, 
you're right. They are, they do look remade on the op, on the offensive and defensive lines. That secondary is revamped in a good way. Um, the the receiving core has talent um, coming out of everywhere, and that's not factoring in Dylan Goffney and Jake Bailey who are out for the spring. Uh, the running back room, you don't have Tyler Levine, Kamar Wheaton still still suspended, uh, but L.J. Johnson and Jalen Knighton and Velton Gardner are really making their their presence known. Especially Jalen Knighton and L.J. Johnson have really had strong last couple of weeks of practices. So Preston Stone, he continues to shine. Like I said last week, had his best day of practice on Thursday. Um, you know, he had the ability to really, um, you know, impress. And and we saw that here and there. Um, Jackson Lavender got some buzz out of the spring as well. He caught from what I had heard was a highlight reel type of reception. He caught the ball, ran about a mile. It's, it, it sounded like from what people were telling me. Um, and made a few guys miss before he finally got chased out of bounds. Um, so there, there's just a lot of competition. There's a lot of talent. And, and I feel like SMU, uh, there's a reason to get get excited, excited um, about what's going on, both on and off the field. So those were just kind of some brief thoughts on SMU football with scrimmage in the books from Friday. I want to wrap up with going in depth for some of you real recruitnik, recruitniks out there. And... Uh, we're going to dive into the class of 2025. So um, there's a lot of names to already know when it comes to SMU recruiting in 2025. We've seen quite a few jump on campus for visits. Uh, the big one this past week was Ty Hawkins, uh, the 2025 quarterback out of San Antonio. He made his first uh, really trip to SMU um, as a target, a true bona fide target for the coaching staff. His sister ran track at SMU. So he does have some ties to campus as well. Um, but uh, Ty Hawkins was on campus. But I want to kind of uh, continue with the high profile discussion of, of recruits. Ty Hawkins didn't end up making our on 300 rankings, which were revealed for the first time on Monday. But he is going to have a potential conversation uh, about landing in that spot. And I want to lead off um, with um, SMU's kind of run of uh, recruits that did make the on 300, the notable guys, not going down every single offer, but I want to lead off with uh, a prospect who's playing down at the Woodlands now. Um, he ranks inside the on 300, number 20 running back nationally, and that's Keandrea Barker. He's originally from Arkansas. I moved to the Woodlands. Uh, he's a guy SMU's had on campus multiple times now, and he's a running back to know. I, I think it's one of those classes that if SMU can kind of clean up um, at the running back position in 2024 with a Harry Stewart, potentially, you know, maybe they go portal, uh, in 2025, if they can't land a guy like a Keandrea Barker or some others out there. Um, you know, but, uh, I will say, and before I move on to other skill positions, Keelan Russell, the Duncanville quarterback lands in the top 100, it's top 100 overall prospect, number eight quarterback nationally, he just led Dun Duncanville to a state championship. Um, He's got Memphis and North Texas offers, and he was a top performer at the Under Armour Dallas camp. I loved what he brings to the table. He's got a great arm, just led Duncanville to a state title game and, and a you know win uh, over North Shore. I think if you're SMU, you have Ty Hawkins, who's up there on your board. There's no question about that. But if I was SMU, and they're also involved with Keldon Ryan, who's the All Saints Episcopal quarterback, and I think SMU's kind of a sleeper in that recruitment at this point, but I'll, I'll be able to share more on that uh, on the message board as we, as the coming weeks unfold. Let's just say that he's uh, a guy who's a very high profile quarterback, Kelvin Ryan. You have Ty Hawkins, you have this offer out to him. I would offer Keelan Russell too. And if you can land a combination of those three or, or just one of those three, I should say, you are sitting in such a good position as a quarterback room. You've got uh, Keldrick Luster coming in this summer. Kevin Henry Jennings is on the roster behind Preston Stone. You've got Tyler Aronson committed. Get a guy locally in the class of 2025, um, You know whether it be Keldon Ryan or uh, Keelan Russell, or you stretch to San Antonio and get Ty Hawkins. You are sitting pretty. We just saw Kevin Sperry, who's a really high-profile prospect out of the Prosper area, commit to Oklahoma. That really wasn't surprising once he got that offer. He was a big target for SMU. 
Um, but that quarterback room, if you can get one of those three, Hawkins, Ryan, or Keelan Russell, my opinion, you're sitting pretty. So kind of moving on to some of the skill positions that did make the cut. Uh, Taz Williams holds an offer from SMU. He's out of the Red Oak area. Uh, goes to Red Oak High School, number 230 overall, number 34 wide receiver. He's been to campus before. Um, his recruitment is really picking up. We've seen TCU, Texas A&M, Baylor, Georgia, all those programs offer. Um, he's got a teammate on the defensive line in uh, Kimorian Morgan um, as well who made the on 300. He's the number 161 overall prospect. It's early for Kimorian. SMU does lead the on three recruiting prediction machine for him, but – He's got Alabama. He's got Georgia. Uh, he's got a bunch of offers to his name. So um, he is an elite prospect as well. That Red Oak program, you know, we saw them produce Warren Roberson this past year. They've got some guys every year. They're doing a good job over there at Red Oak. So shout out Red Oak um, with those two guys, especially uh, the wide receiver group could be a lot of fun for SMU in 2024. And I say this because on Friday, they did have Adrian Wilson, the Pflugerville Weiss wide receiver um, who debuted as the number 26 overall prospect in the country, number five wide receiver nationally. Baylor and SMU are duking it out at the top of the on three recruiting prediction machine. A really impressive prospect, 6'2", 175. He dominated in seven on seven this spring. He's really had a big year, uh, big play uh, in limited catches. That Pflugerville Weiss program, I'm pretty sure they've got a couple guys um, at receiver that you know are deserving of attention. I think they had a Baylor commit or signee uh, come out of there as well um, this past year. So um, that is a group uh, that you you know you, you kind of see them spread it around. Um, so um, that is another prospect out of Flugerville Weiss that is really really good. SMU's now had him on campus. He said he loved it. We'll have the full full story at OnThePonyExpress.com on him recapping his visit, really where SMU stands. But um, he's among the top prospects in the country. Dalen McCutcheon, out of Lucas Lovejoy, debuts at the number 118 overall prospect, number 19 wide out overall. He goes to Lucas Lovejoy, where Jackson Lavender went uh, to high school. He's now on SMU's campus doing his thing. SMU gets a lot of help you know, over there at Lovejoy. They're, they're big fans of the Mustangs. Uh, but Oklahoma did have him on campus this past weekend. Uh, LSU's, you know, starting to recruit him some more. Uh, Oregon is in the mix. Uh, Miami, Penn State. Um, but don't count out SMU here. Uh, there's a long way to go in this recruitment. And I, I think he likes what, you know, Rob likens. And um, obviously he'll have a very good uh, source on the team and Jackson Lavender uh, to kind of bounce things off of. But I think that is a prospect where you can kind of Circle and say it'd be really nice for SMU to land. Don't count them out. Um, but there's a long way to go in that recruitment. One prospect that I want to highlight, and if you ask me right now, who's the most likely to commit to SMU out of the high-profile wideouts in the class of 2025, I would say Kalik Lockett. He's out of Saxe, 6'1", 175, debuts at number 189 overall, number 28 wide receiver nationally. SMU and Texas Tech are right at the top of his on three recruiting prediction machine. He tells me SMU is the one that's really pursuing the most. He was just on campus for a visit uh, with his teammate, Chetta Ophili, who did get the offer of the 2024 edge prospect, who I think is going to rise up the rankings. Kalik Lockett, uh, one of the top prospects in the country, um, has some offers to his name, Texas Tech, Utah, others. Uh, but don't sleep on SMU. He seemed really, really um, high on what the Mustangs bring to the table. I will say it does seem like if Texas does offer him, that's going to be a big offer for him. Uh, it might be tough to turn down. The Horns have already hosted him a few times. But SMU sitting pretty early on with a top 150 overall prospect, according to the On3 industry ranking. He's top 200 overall on On3. So um, the wide receiver position could be one that gets richer. I'll highlight a guy who's visited SMU multiple times, Lamont Rogers on the offensive line out of Mesquite Horn. He checks in. And on three and 24-7, both very high on this prospect. The number 56 overall prospect, number six offensive tackle nationally, makes him a top 10 prospect in Texas. SMU leads the on three recruiting prediction machine. He's got a lot of pro, uh, you know coaching staffs after him now. Kind of keeps to himself a little bit. 
LSU, TCU, Texas, Washington, Tennessee, um, multiple other programs have offered him, but keep an eye on SMU. He's been around campus a good bit. Um, I do want to move over the defensive side of the ball. Um, Zay Gentry is a guy SMU's uh, keeping a close eye on, and he's been on campus. He goes to McKinney, checks in at number 181 overall, number 18 corner nationally. He'll actually be on campus uh, this coming weekend, he told me. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, he's a guy that um, SMU was really, really high on. And then uh, Demetrius Brisbane, uh, who plays quarterback at Tyler Chapel Hill, um, he's a guy who checked in um, well inside uh, the top 300 overall prospects, number 199 overall, number 15 athlete nationally. SMU leads the on three recruiting prediction machine. He's going to SMU on Friday. He'll be at TCU or he'll be on Baylor on Saturday and then Houston on Monday. Mustangs making a good early push for him. I think he's somebody that you've got to circle um, if you're SMU and really buckle in and try to pull out of East Texas. Um, you then uh, go over to Riley Pettijan, teammate of Zay Gentry. He checks in inside the top 100. And I love this addition to the on 300 because we watched him at Under Armour Dallas and I got to see him as well this fall uh, when McKinney played Braswell. Um, he's a safety that moved down the linebacker. He's added some weight. He's got some length. I was watching him at Under Armour Dallas and I thought he should have been working out with the safeties, but he also had the size of a couple guys who are going into their senior year. So watch his stock rise, Baylor, UTSA, UTSA, or Baylor, UTSA, Texas State, Texas Tech, Michigan's jumped in there. Um, but SMU's hosted him a few times now. So keep an eye on the Mustangs there, at least early on. And then I'll mention uh, two South Dallas guys, Kelvion Riggins. SMU is at least going to be a super dark horse for this one. Number 176 overall prospect, number 18 linebacker nationally. AM leads the on three recruiting prediction machine, but he's a Dallas South Oak Cliff kid. He's one of the most ripped prospects I've ever seen in my entire life. He is an elite prospect. Um, SMU is going to swing its shot with him as well uh, in the class of 2025. And same goes for Tyron Polly off that Duncanville team that just won state. Uh, he checks in at number 215 overall, number 13 safety nationally. Um, SMU has gotten him on campus before. And uh, as his recruitment explodes with Baylor, Oklahoma, LSU, and others, Mustangs are going to kind of try to hang in there for him and, and keep a uh, little bit of a South Dallas pipeline going. So with that, just wanted to kind of run down some of the notable names to check in on the uh, 2025 on 300. You can check that out at um, on three.com. Uh, be sure to take a look. Ask me any questions. Well, we're mail mailbag edition of the podcast later this week. We appreciate all you guys who have subscribed to our YouTube channel. Um, closing in on 900 subscribers, please keep subscribing. Just share it with friends, family, whoever will hit that little button for us to subscribe. We appreciate all you guys who have. We'll check in with a mailbag edition of the podcast later this week and more spring football takeaways as the Mustangs head toward that April 14th spring game. So um, appreciate all you guys who have listened to this edition of the podcast and keep subscribing. Um, and checking out on theponyexpress.com. We will catch you guys um, later on this week with another.